Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. Thank you for joining me today for week number seven in the Pokemon Premier League Season 3. Our opponent this week is Shroom Raver and the Parasect Germain, one of our long storied rivals. You can find his information in the comments down below. And please go check him out because this rivalry goes back many, many years. And similarly to several of my opponents in the last two seasons, an absolute pleasure to be able to battle once again. Now, of course, this time we are not facing just Shroom. This time we are also facing Detective Striker. But we'll have to get into that once we get into the battle. At the start, there will be a team builder as per usual, but if you'd like to skip straight to the action, there will also be a timestamp. But for those of you who always stick around for the team builder, you know how I appreciate you. Shroom Raver's team consists of Greninja, Mew, Ogre Pond in its cornerstone form, Grimmsnarl, Haxorus, Orthworm, Chandelure, Sandaconda, Rotom fan form and Toxicroak. His Terra captains are the Ogre Pond cornerstone form and Rotom, which can go into electric, steel, or fairy typing. For those of you who aren't aware, when Ogre Pond is holding a mask, it can only Terra into that type. So Ogre Pond of this type can only be a rock type Terra. And if he does Terra it, it will immediately get a defense boost every time it gets onto the field. For this matchup, let's take a look at the horde. To start things out, our dedicated lead will be a Choice Specs Primarina. Now I know what you're thinking. Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Didn't you bring a Choice Specs Primarina versus Vepsis? Yes, I did. Didn't you miss more than one Hydro Pump versus Vepsis? Also, yes. Did it make you lose the battle? Yes. Do I look like a quitter to you? Now, we're going to bring Choice Specs Primarina because he does not have a swap in to Moonblast. His best swap in is Orthworm. Maybe Chandelure? Both of those are two hit KO'd by a Choice Specs Moonblast. Those aren't swap ins. Here, once again, we're going with a lot of speed because our Choice Specs Primarina needs to outspeed a max speed Sandaconda. And you'll notice that we have a lot of defensive investment, and that allows us to live a Life Orb Adamant Poison Jab from Haxorus. So here we are coming in to basically blast holes into his team. I do have Hydro Pump, Surf, and Flip Turn. I don't plan on clicking them. This is a Moonblast battle, for sure. After the Primarina, we have Darkrai. Darkrai here has Dark Pulse, Sludge Bomb, Knock Off, and Ice Beam with Life Orb. I really changed this set around at least three times right before the match, and I finally settled on the Life Orb, because if I didn't have the power up on all of his moves, if he ran Assault Vest in different places, or if he just ran specially bulky things, I would fail to get the two shot. So here I can knock off the Assault Vest on an incoming Rotom that has uh, Assault Vest, incoming Sanaconda that has Assault Vest, that also allows me to knock off Grimmsnarl trying to swap in on a dark move and maybe get rid of a Light Clay or it's just anything strange that he might want to trick to me. And it gives me a way to knock off an item on Toxicroak, which I could also see swapping in because being a poison fighting type, it would resist my Dark Pulse and my Sludge Bomb for coverage. Here we have just enough speed to outspeed the Greninja and then the rest going in to HP. Our next teammate is going to be Choice Scarf Articuno. We did bring this versus Seabad, but it did not get a chance to hit the field. This I am planning to set up as a Terra Flying battle. You see what I did there? Terrifying, terrifying. Ah, uh, you don't care. 
With the Terra-type change to flying, not only does it remove one of our rock weaknesses, so we're only a single time weak to rock, but it also means that we'll be taking less damage on Stealth Rock. We won't lose 50%, we'll lose 25%. And that will enable us to avoid a little bit of the shenanigans around rock coverage on several of his Pokemon. Because Articuno is so bulky, when it's not four times weak to something, it has great survivability. Now, with Choice Scarf, this was a bring that is a little bit risky this week. Articuno can speed, outspeed rather, his Greninja. And everything slower, because Greninja is his fastest Pokemon, will also be outsped. But if you were to boost with something, then Articuno won't outspeed it. But that's why I put so much of the HP EVs on here. Because Articuno can generally take a hit from anything on this team. There is a chance to have some priority here, whether it's Vacuum Wave or Sucker Punch from Toxicroak, First Impression from the Haxorus. You can run several different priority moves and Greninja and Grimmsnarl both have access to priority as well. So having a more bulky flying type here means that I don't have to worry as much about the priority fighting um, and bug for Haxorus moves that might come out. Hurricane after I Terra flying can two shot or one shot the entire team, but I don't plan on clicking Hurricane very frequently. I plan on maybe clicking Hurricane once early and then cleaning up with Terra Blast later. After Articuno, we have our Claude Sire. Once again, max special defense and rocking Toxic, Spikes, Earthquake, and Yawn. And here I have Yawn on it just so I can hopefully annoy some things off the battlefield. Uh, I might swap Yawn for Recover. I'm not sure yet as I'm recording this, this uh, team builder. So we'll see. But the idea is, is that Things like the Orthworm or a Terra Steel Rotom fan would completely wall Claude Sire because they uh, have ways to make themselves immune to the ground type move. So if I only have Toxic or a Poison type move, then I can't hit their Steel typing. So Yawn would at least force them off the field. Toxic Croak is also quite annoying. And so running Claude Sire, even though I have to be wary of those physical earthquakes coming out there, I can still take at least two of those coming from Toxic Croak unless he boosts up with Swords Dance. But Claude Sire is my guaranteed swap into um, the Mew, into the Chandelure, and also very lightly into the Toxicroak. I could come in on Greninja, but I need to confirm if he's physical or special. If he is, if he is physical, he can easily two-shot this Claude Sire uh, with the right coverage. After Claude Sire, we have our Kaludon rocking the Assault Vest. Weird spread this week. We went with max defense and max special defense for in defense special attack. No HP investment because we want the maximum boost from that uh, assault vest possible. Here we have Flash Cannon, Body Press, Brick Break, and Draco Meteor. Brick Break is just there in case he tries to set up screens. We can break those screens. Generally, I should be throwing off Flash Cannon in this matchup, except for his two Pokemon that might end up being Steel types, and that's why we have Body Press and or Brick Break. Um, in the event that the um, Grim Snarl is dead, I can also start throwing off Draco Meteors, but I don't wanna be in a position where I'm forced to switch unless I have some defensive boost, cause then I can at least change moves and go to Body Press if I have some defensive boost. But our Caledon is a great swap into the Ogre Pond. If Mew sets up and it ends up being a physical Mew, our Caledon can definitely handle that. It can, to an extent, handle the Sandaconda. I won't be one shot by it. I gotta be careful taking too many earthquakes and I should be able to handle the Toxicroak unless it's a special one as well. And I do have to be careful about something like the Orthworm setting up alongside my Arcaladon because it could very easily outbulk me with Iron Defenses. My last Pokemon here, because he has so many different options to set up on his squad, is Annihilate. And I'm running it with the Mirror Herb. Now, this was actually a suggestion that I got from Pokame. And um, I was already playing around with Annihilate set a little bit here. I have enough... Uh, speed for a Rotom trying to creep an uninvested Annihilate, which means that I have plenty of speed for his other slower Pokemon, such as the Sandaconda, the Orthworm, and Grimmsnarl, and Toxicroak. So um, I, I do think that that's a good benchmark there because I have plenty of HP and special defense EVs to take special hits here. 
And with bulk up, I'll be raising my physical defense. And with 88 attack EVs, I can easily two shot or ice punch into coverage punch, uh, something like the Haxorus as well. So between poke aim and Ellie, I absolutely believe that we have the tech this week. Shout outs to both of them as well. Thank you for letting me infiltrate your minds and pull out ideas when I um, was out of brain juice myself. I appreciate you letting me come into those mind palaces and just, you know, tear down some of the wallpaper and use it as a souvenir. Get out, I need to go to my mind palace. So thank you all for watching the team builder. And now let's get in to the battle. Ah, yes, Detective Striker. Fancy meeting you here. I believe it is time that we bring to bear the terrifying nature of the shadows. For this matchup, we are absolutely prepared to lead with our pre arena because you simply have no swap-ins. <laughs> What will you do? Oh, I see that you've led with your Greninja. Excellent. I'd be happy to stay in here and simply blast your team apart. We're gonna go right for that Moonblast. And I see that you do go for the Protean. I did not anticipate Protean for this matchup. I thought that Battle Bond had a better matchup. And I could have very easily swapped out to my Claude Sire. So kind of a surprising start. But for this matchup, I don't think I need uh, to let Primarina go down this early. We'll preserve the Primarina and we'll go out to Claude Sire. And if he does pack uh, additional coverage, especially after the special attack drop, I don't anticipate him being able to take out Claude Sire. Here, we're just gonna try to lay up a layer of spikes. Uh, I could try to double out expecting him to maybe U-turn or do something like that. He just goes for extra sensory and he clinches the flinch. Now, I would have loved to get up a layer of spikes there. As you can see, his team is very well grounded. Um, actually, everyone that he's brought is on the ground, so I would love to get a layer of spikes. Now, me thinking here, he saw that I stayed in and how little that move did, so I thought he would swap out here. And so I ended up clicking Toxic, expecting him to go out to maybe his new or to try to go out into something to set up on me. But he just stays in. And because Protean changed him to the annoying poison type, he does not even get the toxic proc here. So he gets a couple of layer of spikes himself. And as with most um, detectives, really, if you can't beat them, join them. Why not just scatter all the caltrops around? It's like when you're being investigated by the cops and they're like, are you sure that this bag of powder isn't yours? And you're like, I haven't seen that in my entire life. And they just, in their trunk, they have many bags of powder. It's like, I don't know where you got that from, but they sure know. Now, Mew comes onto the battlefield here. I decided to switch up and go for Earthquake, thinking that he was just going to keep on setting up because Greninja does get access to Toxic Spikes as well. And if I could just go ahead and take it out, I want that opportunity. Now, he has up all three layers of Spikes and he has up Stealth Rocks. I do go for Toxic on the Mew. I only have one layer of Spikes up and... Um, why not go for more here? I was afraid of his Mew trying to set up on me. I am happy that I was able to catch it on the swap end because based off of that damage, he's not very physically bulky. Maybe more especially bulky or maybe trying to set up. But he surprises me with Roar, which does enable me to get up a second layer of spikes. Now keep in mind that we are missing a layer of spikes because we got flinched earlier. Sterling, the Arcaludon, comes in here off of the Roar. And this is not horrible because... I can just throw off an attack here. I was very tempted to go for a Draco Meteor, but I thought he would swap out or maybe start setting up. And uh, I really should have gone for the Draco Meteor just for the sheer raw damage there. Flash Cannon does okay damage, but we can see he's absolutely much more specially bulky. Now I do get out to Darkrai here on this roar, and this is exactly what I want to see. Because I can just go for a free Dark Pulse here. After the Stealth Rocks, the Spikes, and the Life Orb hit, we're missing a lot of HP. I do need to say above half HP in order to be able to take a vacuum wave from like a max modest um, Toxicroak. I cannot take a first impression no matter what. So that's not going to happen. Uh, Santa Cana comes out and I was really confused why he brought this out here. My thinking was, oh, he's probably incredibly bulky 
Hefty, hefty, hefty. Whippy, whippy, whippy. And knows that he can take a special hit. Because the rocks and everything were already up, I don't think he's gonna set up rocks here, so I figured he was gonna set up, so I go directly out into my Annihilate, expecting him to maybe go for Coil and be max special defense invested. But that damage, did you see the damage on the Earthquake? That did so much, this is a bulky Annihilate. And he brought it out in front of Darkrai, so I was like, is he scarfed? Is this a scarf, Sandaconda? I had to confirm because if I got it wrong and he went for a coverage move on a low HP Annihilate, I didn't want to lose another teammate. But based on the fact that he outsped my Annihilate and he did that much damage, I'm thinking he's like max max invested on attack. So I do go out to my Articuno here calling that he is locked in on Earthquake. And we're immediately going to go for the Terrestrialization to the Flying type and begin our Terra Flying Crusade. Now with this, Hurricane can one shot every single member that he has brought to this team, except for perhaps the Grim Snarl and the Haxorus. But if neither of them are carrying items like heavy duty boots or some sort of like pinch berry where they'll get a little bit of HP back, he does not have anything on his team that can handle this Pokemon. He would need to have something scarfed in the back that can hit me, which might be the Sanaconda because I only outspeed Greninja. So if his Sanaconda is faster than a max speed Darkrai, which it can be with a choice scarf, then um, we're in for a little bit of trouble. So that's one Pokemon down to a terrifying hurricane. We hit those. This is what happens when we hit our moves. Last week, we missed a move. This week, we're hitting the moves. Detective Striker, do you see what I mean? Do you understand how we can intervene in the detective work that you're doing here? There's nothing that I can't do once I put my mind to it because that's two, two Pokemon down to Terra flying hurricanes. Are you scared? I know you are and that's why you went out to your Haxorus here. You love to see it. Now, no heavy duty boots on Haxorus means from this range, it looks like a little bit of a roll. I could swap out here, but I was also worried about him living and then setting up. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to let him have a free setup expecting me to swap out. So we're just going to go for another hurricane. And that's three for three easy. Now he does barely live. If I had gotten up one more layer of spikes earlier, this Haxorus would be dead. And Poison Jab also poisons me. So I, number one, I can't swap back in anyway. But if I were to miss a hurricane, then I die to the poison. I, I said, if I, what are you doing? Articuno, that was not the hurricane to miss. He's able to set up a dragon dance and then I die to the poison from the poison jab. And I'm looking at what I have left here. I don't think that I can take any hits from this Haxorus at this point in the battle. I don't have anything that outspeeds him. And with plus one attack with Haxorus is a massive attack stat. Did I lose again from missing an attack? This is not possible. Are you joking? Where did I go wrong? I I might need to re-examine my juice intake before these battles. I I truly thought that if I came into this battle and I just clicked buttons, that I would win. Darkness always beats out justice in the end. It doesn't matter if it's Draft League City or the Justice League or anything like that. What is going on? How can we possibly lose an entire battle just because we missed one move? Okay. Well, Shroom Raver, Detective Striker, you might have won this battle, but I hope you understand that it was because of a miss, a fluke, a rare miss. Because Primarina did not miss in this battle because I didn't give it an opportunity to. <laughs> I admit that you were a very skillful battler and I am so happy that we got to meet on the battlefield. But I'm not done. There's still two weeks left in the Pokemon Premier League. 
expect us. We're coming. And sometimes that means that you have to bring a whole murder with you to get some things done, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So they think they've beaten me. Once again, how naive do you have to be? With every KO, with every person who mentions my real name, the, the Velvet, Velvet Man, Man grows in power. And even if I lose today, even when? if I win tomorrow, it's all in light of a bigger plan to bring the shadows to everyone. Now I think it's time for some tea. <laughs> <laughs>